This is Hugh Cross, I'm in Australia, down under, and it's Christmas Day, and how appropriate but to draw some pine cones to show how I use Noodler's Ink, uh, Beaver Colour, uh, for a simple subject that's high contrast. So this will be our subject, I'll just put that down, and I've just completed the drawing, so I'll go through how I did that. This is still wet, um, hopefully the glare's not on that. Uh, but you can see how it's quite effective in getting a simple uh, rendition of something that's fairly high contrast. Um, so I, I did those two drawings. These are the ones that were people were interested in. How did I do it? Um, there's the other one. And they're quite detailed, delicate little drawings. And by comparison, this is quite chunky and simple, but it's a much easier subject to show you how you do it. And I, I show you how you do the light tones and only partially dissolve those lines and in areas where you want the deep tone I put a lot of ink on the page and dissolved that in to get the dark tone. Thank you. So this is the ink that I used in that drawing. It's called Noodler's Ink. There you go. You can see this has had a lot of use. Made in USA and it was about $40 um, um, seven years ago or so. I still keep it in this little cardboard container because it helps protect this. There we go, the glass bottle. Uh, and of course some of the ink spilt out as I've refilled my pens. And it can stain your fingers rather nicely. Um, and you can see that even after all these years, I've only used less than a quarter, and maybe a quarter of it. So it can be expensive to buy, but it lasts you a very long time. So while we're on the desk, um, you just have a, a pen that you can refill. Uh, so this is a Lamy fountain pen. Very, very nice. And it has a converter inside. That's the converter. I've just taken the the outside off and you can see the ink level in there. So you just twist this bit I'm holding and um, you can suck the ink up out of the bottle. So the other essential piece of kit is um, either a water brush, they call the water brush, so they hold the water in the handle and the cap just pulls off and you can get very size uh, brushes. This one's large from memory and it's coming to a nice point uh, after some use they eventually get bedraggled and this will uh, unscrew and this brand is a good one Oops. in that this has a seal um, so you can hold it upside down the water doesn't come out um, but one consequence of that is to get any decent amount of flow of water to the brush, you need to squeeze it, and sometimes you get a great glob of, of water coming out. And that can give you some happy accidents, in fact. Right. Now you don't need that, you can just wet a brush, and you just have your little jar of water and an ordinary watercolour brush, and um, that works equally as well. But this is very convenient if you're out and about, all you need is the pen, water brush and your pad and so the pad I'm using is a Strathmore's pad on this occasion but sometimes I'm using other brands uh, you can see the texture on that so it's the equivalent of a cold press it's a 300 GSM it doesn't need to be that thick for this size which is A5 um, but it, it's got a hard cover and that means that it stays stiff when you're out and about and you can just hold it or prop it up against something because when you wash it's always good to have an angle. Right. Here are the two that I did the other day uh, so you can sort of get an idea of the size and the effect you can get with washing the ink is either to dissolve the watercolour pretty well completely like in this area here you can see very faintly the cross hatching and for it to dissolve you have to do your cross hatching quite light you can see a little bit heavier here and I haven't 
hopefully dissolved it. Um, there are some lines that I've left really without touching the watercolour. Uh, well, it's effectively a watercolour ink in that it dissolves. And on the background hills, you'll see the cross hatching. And I've kept it very light, so you get a speckledy effect there, which is more luminous. And the same on the hull, I've, I've not totally dissolved the ink because I wanted to retain the white. And the brightest part of the sails, I've not touched with ink or with the water brush at all. Um, now, to get the dark colours, you're not adding ink with the water. It, all the ink is on the page. So with your drawing, you have to do cross-hatching or a bit of scumbling and scrubbing with your pen to get more ink onto the page in the areas you want to be dark. And that's the judgement. So over on this right hand one, there's a whole lot of cross hatching there to get it as dark as that around the, the underside of the poop. Now, I'm not going to show you doing those in that it takes quite a while to do the drawing and it's really an exercise in being able to draw angles and so on. What I've found in the past when I've shown people how to do this is um, pine cones are a fantastic uh, first place to start because this technique works best with uh, high contrast either light or dark and you can get about one mid tone in between um, to get more tones than that uh, is a bit difficult um, so it's very good for quick direct rendering of subjects like these pine cones that got very bright outer tips and then very dark between and we'll see that your drawing doesn't have to be magnificent and the cross hatching doesn't have to be uh, really parallel and neat. Uh, if you totally dissolve the ink, none of that really matters. So because this is all very amateurish and I haven't got a tripod to hold this camera, I'm going to do the drawing and then show you that before I do any washing with the water brush. And voila, there is the magnificent drawing of those two middle cones. It's a loose sketch and it can look very rubbishy at this point and of course I haven't gone for accuracy. It's more about the feel of these pine cones but when you see the next stage you'll see it just totally transform. I'll try and stop halfway through and show you what I'm doing. So the other thing you'll need is a tissue to soak up the moisture or to clean the tip of your brush when you need to because the brush will pick up the ink off the paper. Um, so we'll just start by lightly dissolving the shadow line here. And it's like all good water brushes, um, lay them on their side. The shadow can be nice to have a little bit broken so you don't dissolve everything and leave some speckle there. And so there you go. You can see how that just changes the whole character of the drawing. So similarly, when we look at the, the branch, it's actually quite a light tone. And so I'm going to try and keep that. And so I'm just going to dance this water brush around. I'll come and clean it because I don't want too much ink on there, starting the light areas then work into say a shadowed area. You can see the shadow, car shadow falling across the branch and so we've got a nice little dark in here and that one was quite dark. Come over to this side and quickly whip it across and you can get a bit of a dry brush effect. There you go. This is all a bit tricky isn't it, filming and doing this. Now, I mentioned that you can squeeze the handle um, and that's what I'll do here to get a blob of water to come out of the brush. So you'll see, whoops, well, there's a big blob of water. Now I've quickly got to run that round and I'm dancing my pen around all the highlights, trying to keep all the highlights and just go over the areas that I've indicated. Whoops, I think I've just gone over a key element of my pine cone. And it can look really nice 
if you're fearless and just go with it and have too much water. Now we're coming onto the shadow side of the pine cone here, uh, which you'll see there. So it's it's losing it just so I can alter the shape. I can actually go outside where I drew. And because I've got my page on a slope, I'm just carrying the ink and I'm doing little diagonal movements to try and get it to emulate what's there in real life. Now you'll see this top area, the ink's carried away downhill and that can be good and bad. So you've just got to think about that. Uh, decide what lights you keep. Now I'll just do the shadow. And avoid touching it in every spot, or otherwise you'll get all that dark ink running away from your pine cone. All right, so just here we go. Now I've, I've been very successful in running the ink here, so I you can see how the whole pine cone's dissolved. Right, I'm giving you a bit of shine. Get a few different angles on it. So let's try this one. It's, it's a lot easier if you're not holding a camera at the same time, obviously. So here, I won't squeeze out too much water on this. Um, this area is quite a light part of the pine cone, so I didn't put as much ink there. And the areas that I want to be dark, that's where I've dropped a lot of ink. Where I've, I've had to scumble it in and cross hatch. So now I'm using the tip of the brush again. So on the shadows, I was on the side of the brush, and these areas for the detail, I'm just dancing the brush around on the tip, and I'm squeezing the brush handle to get some water to come out. And as I say, with this style of drawing, loose is a goose is better. The, um, the limitation of that, of course, is if you, you put too much ink out, sorry, too much water, you'll run all that dark ink away, so you won't have the darks where you want them. Um, there we go. When you've got dark on your brush, you can put it somewhere else as well. It's relatively light. Um, so just evaluate some of that. Okay. Some of these. Right. Okay, that's not too bad. I'll just wipe the brush here, see how much ink's picked up. And I can just lightly soften some of these areas. Um, you'll see, see, he's a nice big one. And when we look at the pine cone, there's sort of grey and then white. So if I just carefully wet that area, the ink will sort of run into it a bit. So on the back of that, it's still a bit wet to be doing this stage. But so you can see just here, let me get the focus right. That's a light tone, the white, and then a light tone and then the dark. So um, here I've got a nice puddle. I might move it over where it means something more. It's a bit odd over there. Darkest part of the shadow will be, oops, focus, in here. And again, I can just pick up a bit of that. Just wherever you've got that, you can borrow a bit. So it's quite flexible that way. All right, wipe in the brush. And let's have a look, get the glare away, and there are our pine cones. So it's a passable rendition for a quick sketch. Um, and by really having quite a lot of ink on the page initially in the drawing, that's what gives you the deep darks. And then giving it enough water that you get a natural variation. You can see these sort of areas, and they're still wet, They've gone light, even though it might have been a lot of ink there and it's tended to run off down the page. 
So this subject was quite handy in that the darker part of the subject was underneath anyway. Um, but if you don't want it to run too much, you don't put as much water out of your brush. It's easier to control the amount of water with an ordinary brush and dipping it and uh, then variously wiping it on a rag or a tissue before you apply it to your drawing. Now, there's a couple of things with this. Um, once this ink has started to dry, it will not move again, right? So it's water soluble once, and that's true pretty much for all inks. Um, so for an area like that, if I make sure my brush is clean of ink, so it's still got water in here, if I come back and try and move some of this, it will only move a little bit, but basically it doesn't move a second time. That's because I didn't totally dissolve that ink there. Oops, sorry. Yeah, so it, it's not really going to move a second time. Right. Um, and of course you can wet on the outside of a line as well. So if there was some other object over here, you can just wet the line and so to, to show the highlight on the light side of that branch and just run it away so that has a soft edge and even with just a single line it'll give enough ink to give a slight bit of tone in the background area and I did that in a few areas in those drawings of the ship this is another area with the camera over here. There we go. So you can sort of see that effect. Okay, so there we have some Christmas Day pine cones rendered in Noodler's Ink. Uh, beaver colour. I'm sorry I didn't mention the colour of but the colour of this ink is beaver colour as in the animal and not all noodlers inks uh, are water soluble. Some of their colours are including this one and other ones aren't. Yeah well there we are so um, our little sketch has dried now um, so we can see our pine cones. I leave the signing tool after I've washed it with the water. Otherwise you might just come across it with your water brush and, um, and blur your signature. So um, uh, it can be best to do it later. And sometimes of course you'll crop down an image and then you want to have your signature elsewhere other than where you put it. Um, so just to show you, uh, I had a holiday in New Zealand um, uh, last year, uh, just before COVID, thank God. And um, you can see I did these little on-site sketches. Um, so you can draw quite quickly, just uh, standing up, doing a drawing, and then you can wash it on-site, which of course is best because you're seeing the shadows and everything there. But if you take a photo, you can then hit it with a water brush later. Um, it works really well for urban scenes. You can get all the darks of the buildings quite easily. Um, you can do people. Um, that can be a lot of fun. Um, and of course in cafes, which is one of my favourite activities, uh, you can just draw people and so on. You can use other inks, of course, so try them out. Many pens that, aren't, that they don't have on the, the side of them, they're waterproof or permanent will be water soluble. This one's a grey pen. I was trying out a friend's pen with grey ink and then I've just washed it slightly here and there. Uh, so it's a very versatile technique and I can recommend that. Um, experiment with different papers. If you use cartridge paper, your lines won't dissolve nearly as well as what they do on watercolour paper. So try a hot press, um, you get one effect. And if you have um, a cold press because of the speckly texture, you can get a broken, um, uh, wash when you touch it lightly with your brush which is very nice for luminous shadows and so on. Thanks for watching, um, it's an amateur production, my first one and I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks.